Coming up next on Newswatch Hopkinsville, when it comes to corn, local farmers rank among the nation's best. And Christian County has a brand new baseball coach. Seth Levitt will tell you all about that in sports. Plus, cooler temps today. Will they stay that way? We'll find out in Newswatch Weather. This and more as your news starts now. This is Newswatch Hopkinsville with Eddie Owen. Welcome everyone. This is Newswatch Hopkinsville. I'm Eddie Owen, the Monday edition. Glad to have you on board. Our top story this afternoon, more than 900 soldiers from the 101st will return from Iraq tomorrow and Wednesday. Soldiers coming home are members of the 101st and 159th Combat Aviation Brigades, the 501st Special Troops Battalion, as well as 2nd and 3rd Brigade Combat Teams. The division began its current deployment in August of last year, and redeployment will continue through November. Local corn farmers will be happy to know that Christian County rates among the top places in the country for their line of work. Newswatch Hopkinsville's Cheryl Glassford has more. Jim Mosley has been farming corn in the area for around 50 years. That's why he wasn't surprised when recently Progressive Farmer Magazine voted Christian County the eighth best place in the country to grow the vegetable. I'm not really surprised. I, I think we ought to at least be there or above. It makes sense to Mosley that the area is so successful in the corn business, which he attributes largely to our environment. We've got the t soil types in Christian County that are conducive to good corn production. And our weather conditions are here good, and mostly the farmers try to get our corn out the latter part of March and April. If we can get the corn out at that time of year with the spring rains that we have, most of it's mature by the time we get into dry weather. Other major factors make it possible that most of the corn grown here stays here. We have available markets within a short driving distance and farmers have to figure transportation costs when they take the total cost of growing a crop. We have probably the highest user locally is the ethanol plant, Commonwealth Energy. And uh, they're using right now about 11 million bushels a year. We also have a couple of mills here in Hopkinsville. Hopkinsville Milling Company uses a great deal of white corn. The uh, seed, fertilizer, and chemical companies, they do a lot of research. And uh, they share that research with the farmers. The farmers have a better understanding of just what best suits that particular yield. As for this year's corn crop, better than ever, according to this longtime farmer. This year's corn crop is probably going to be the second best that we've had in Christian County. Uh, in, in so, on some areas of the county where they've had a little more rain, it's probably going to be the best crop that some of the farmers have had. Cheryl Glassford, Newswatch, Hopkinsville. The Toyota of Hopkinsville is the recipient of the 2005 Toyota Motor Sales President's Award. That's for the fourth consecutive year. Toyota Motor Sales recognizes those dealerships that have demonstrated a commitment to maintaining customer satisfaction. The local Toyota dealership was singled out for its community service as well as overall sales and customer care in all areas of operations. The director of sales says it's important for the dealership to maintain a high level of service. We want to show that we're not just here on a corporate level to do business, put Toyotas in people's driveway and that's it. We want to show the, our, our community and the surrounding communities that we're here to do business with the community. We're also here to take care of their needs customer satisfaction wise to feel like when they're purchasing a, dealer, a, purchasing a vehicle from Toyota Hopkinsville that it's uh, a very much a family experience and not, and, and not just a pressure situation where you're just buying an automobile and that's it. An ad featuring Toyota of Hopkinsville will be featured in the upcoming issue of Time Magazine noting its support of high school sports in the area. Well, the director of the United Way, Ann Petrie, has announced her resignation. After serving as the director for nine years, she submitted her resignation at the end of last week. On Thursday, August the 17th, we did have a resignation of Ann Petrie, who was president of the United Way of the Pinaral. And as a result of that resignation, I have been in contact with Ter Terry Tolan of the United Way of Kentucky, and we are looking for someone to fill that position as an interim director of United Way as well as permanent director of United Way. Stand by. Petrie was instrumental in starting up local programs for United Way as, helping, as well as helping to expand it to Caldwell, Todd, and Trigg counties. 
Well, a drunk driver crashes, damaging two vehicles before being taken to the hospital. 47-year-old Marshall Thomas was driven driving north on East 21st Street around 10 o'clock Saturday night when he crashed into a parked SUV. According to police reports, the SUV became airborne, struck the rear driver's side of another parked vehicle before landing in front of a nearby yard. No one was reportedly in the parked vehicles. Thomas was taken to Jenny Stewart Medical Center for treatment of a head injury. The driver was charged with a DUI and wanton endangerment of four juveniles sitting a few feet from the scene of the accident. Well, inmates at the Christian County Jail are working to make their stay beneficial to those in the community. Newswatch Hopkinsville's Latanya Stevens has more. The Christian County Jail Community Service Program is a very successful partnership that uses inmates working essentially as employees for local nonprofit organizations. It saves these different agencies a tremendous amount of money. Uh, last year, uh, I think we saved the community about $2.4 million in free labor. Uh, so far over the last 12 years, it's right at $20 million is what we've saved the community by having the inmates out working for these different public nonprofit agencies. The program has been beneficial for both sides, giving those in jail an opportunity to give back and the jail an opportunity to make money. The program provides workers for more than 25 organizations that welcome the help. They work for H5C or the Bruce Convention Center and they work for the Housing Authority and the Landfill and the Rec Department and like I say for, for Crofton and uh, Pembroke and Oak Grove and, and matter of fact we send some inmates out to Trigg County and to Todd County because we're housing their inmates for them now. Their jails are closed but we still send them inmates to be able to work for, for their county government up there. Habitat for Humanity also relies heavily on the inmates to help build homes for deserving families. They feel like they've done something constructive. I, I think that's a big help for them to get through the period that they're going through now and then it also helps them when they're back in the uh, outside world that some of them have, have gained new job skills and, and people skills and have had a chance to work somewhere where they're appreciated and I think that means so much to them. More than 72 minimum custody inmates serving one to five years in jail participate in the program but during that jail time also provide an invaluable service to the community at large. Normally the, the you think about inmates in jail you think about it being a burden on the taxpayers but actually we've turned it around and tried to make it an asset to the community and, and, and uh, all the different agencies that without them I think they would probably struggle to be able to do what they do do. LaTanya Stevens, Newswatch, Hopkinsville. Taking a look around the Commonwealth, the Ballard, a Ballard County man accidentally shoots himself in the chest with a shotgun. 48-year-old Cloy Cooper of Monkey's Eyebrow was in his driveway loading his pickup truck with hunting supplies when a shotgun accidentally discharged, resulting in a fatal injury to the chest. A passing motorist saw Cooper's body in the driveway and contacted 911. Cooper was pronounced dead at the scene. No foul play is suspected. However, KSP is continuing to investigate the incident. The state's only military school is shutting its doors because of low enrollment and diminishing support from alumni. A former school trustee says the Millersburg Military Institute north of Lexington could be sold for development. It's been in Bourbon County for 113 years. Enrollment was 45 in the spring, but school officials had wanted to double that. The school was facing a $1 million debt. O'Connell says the school's creditors were not willing to give the school more leeway. The school had once planned a makeover to convert it to a prep school, but many alumni didn't like that idea. Well, recently, a 41-year-old school teacher, John Carr, confessed to killing John Benet Ramsey back in 1996. Now, speculation surrounds his confession. What's your opinion? That's Newswatch Hopkinsville's Question of the Week. I'm on the fence about it. There are things that, that indicate that he might have done it, but then again, with his background, it, there's things that would make you think that it just might be an obsession. Right now, I just think he's just a deranged um, pedophile looking for attention and um, just really needs some help. Okay, I don't believe he did it. I think he's, the way they talk, he's obsessed with her and has been because he claims he had her. He picked her up from school. There was no school. And he claims he wrote her poems and he's waiting to be in heaven with her. I think he's just obsessed. I haven't really decided yet. I uh, understand he's got a pretty good alibi, so I don't know, but the police seem to have something, so I'm kind of waiting. I hate
have been watching the news and he admitted it, so I pretty well think he did it. And time will tell. If you have an idea for question of the week, we ask you send it to us. Email us, news at WKAG.com, or call us at any of the numbers right there on the screen, including Verizon Star 43. That's a free call from you to us on your Verizon wireless phone. Oh, will the cool weather stay? Let's go to the Weather Center and take a glimpse at the forecast.